A form of exercise I'm really excited about is called blood flow restriction therapy. And what is blood flow restriction training? It's, it's essentially this novel biohack where you're putting bands on your upper, uh, upper or lower extremities, now at the same time, and you inflate this cuff, which creates pressure that reduces the uh, blood flow back to the heart. So when you're engaging in the exercise, these metabolic byproducts build up and they cause enormous benefits. Essentially, it's creating an environment that is relatively low in oxygen or hypoxic. So there's, you're decreasing the oxygen flow in, this, in, in your muscles. And the result of that, these slow twitch muscle fibers, which require oxygen, essentially fatigue out real quickly. And the only way that you can move the muscle is to engage the fast twitch fibers. And that is really why it works so well. And the process involves an interesting molecule called lactate. Uh, and it's, it's a result of anaerobic uh, metabolism in your muscle, uh, sometimes called fermentation. And when you have fermentation in yeast, it makes, a, it makes a molecule called ethanol. And that's what people drink to obtain the benefits or the perceived benefits of drinking alcohol would be that would be, it's basically anaerobic fermentation that used to. But in, in, in our own cells, we make lactate. And this lactate is a waste product, but it has enormous benefits. And some of the benefits that it does is that it, as, as it, you stimulate the anaerobic metabolism in your muscle because it's constricted because, because of the cuffs that restrict the blood flow, as I'll demonstrate in a moment, the lactate levels build up. And then the lactate levels actually are, eventually get circulated through the body and into the brain. And it does a magnificent thing in the brain. It, 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 once it gets into the brain, it stimulates a hormone called BDNF, which is brain-derived neurotropic factor. It's essentially fertilizer for your brain. So it does that. But it does a really other very interesting action. And that there's this other protein in your body called myostatin. And myostatin is essentially, when it's present, it's an inhibitor for your muscle growth. So uh, if you can, it essentially blocks your muscle from growing. Uh, if you can inhibit this myostatin, then your muscles tend to grow. And in fact, you can do this genetically uh, at, a, at a genes or knock out these genes in, in certain animals like mice or cows. And you can see, look this up. It's called myostatin inhibitor on, on, a, on a, in a search engine with the images. And you'll see pictures of these essentially bodybuilding mice or cows, and it's pretty extraordinary. And it's because they've inhibited this, this protein called myostatin. So you can do the same thing with this type of exercise because the blood flow restriction training will actually, low, because of lactate, will lower myostatin by up to 50%. But it doesn't stop there. Because in your muscles, there are cells called satellite cells, which are basically muscle stem cells. And the lactate will also increase your muscle stem cells by not double but triple it by 300 percent if, you, if you're doing these exercises correctly so you increase muscle stem cells you inhibit myostatin and you fuel your brain with bdnf i mean that is just a magnificent uh, combination of things but it doesn't even stop there because one of the keys especially as you're getting older is your circulation and your microcirculation your capillaries so the metabolic changes that occur as a result of blood flow restriction training is that it increases another hormone called VEGF. That's vascular endothelial growth factor. And this vascular endothelial growth factor increases like 400%. And it, this is instead of fertilizer for your brains, it's fertilizer for your blood cells. It, it stimulates a process called angiogenesis where you're forming all these new blood vessels all over your body. So that's really important, if this, especially if you want to have a healthy brain as you grow older. So, and, and and heart, because you know the two two of the largest diseases that we have as we age is heart disease and then neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. So this this type of exercise is really a powerful way to do that. And not only do these exercises stimulate all those pathways, but it does even more. Um, it, it causes an infiltration of white blood cells, specifically macrophages and neutrophils, into your, into your muscles. And this infiltration of these cells 
causes the release of something called a cytokine, which is an intracellular messenger, and, and it, it produces pro-inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-6 and some others. And when those are released, it causes the cells to, to activate a process, uh, another pathway called mTOR. And mTOR is really the anabolic signal for your body to build stronger muscles. So as you can see, there's a whole wide variety of important metabolic signaling pathways to get activated when you do something as simple as blood flow restriction training. You have to be aware though that there's a sweet spot, there's an ideal sweet spot for this restriction. It's not like you're cutting off all the blood vessels. That is not a good idea. That will cause damage. One of the other rules is that you only put the cuff on your extremities for 15 minutes at a time. You can uh, do multiple cycles, but 15 minutes is what you want to do. And the other principle is that you're going to as I said, you're going to use a lot less weight. Typically, we, we have a, a, a term called the one rep maximum. So, so for a bicep curl, in my case, I can lift maybe a 55 pounds for one rep, and that's about it, 50 to 55, somewhere in there. And I really can't do more than one. So for, it's different for everyone. Some people are going to be a lot more, some people are going to be a lot less. So you find whatever that weight is, and you go like to 40 to 50% of that weight. And rather than doing 10 reps, which is what typically most people do, nothing wrong with that, but it's not, it's not blood flow restriction training, you're gonna do 30 reps. So if you, if you pick a weight that's too small, you'll be able to do 30, 40, 50 reps. And if you can do 50 reps, that weight is too small. It's too small, because you're not gonna get the benefits. You, you really have to activate those type two muscle fibers and let it go into anaerobic metabolism. And if it's too small, you're not gonna do this. So you do 30 reps, and then you wait at about 30 seconds or less if you can. Usually the restricting factors you'll see when I do these exercises is gonna be your ability to, for your heart rate to slow down and so you have enough oxygen because your, your heart's gonna be beating so fast, which is why it's a form of high intensity exercise.